It's showtime. Hey, welcome to Did You Watch Survivor Last Night? This is the only Survivor podcast. My name is Jake Scheidel. Each week I ask my best friend Thomas Powell if he did indeed watch a certain reality show or several. Uh, hey, Thomas, how are you doing this week? Jake, it's uh, both Hollywood's biggest night and uh, college basketball's biggest night. Is, I'm talking about the Oscars, talking about Selection Sunday. Is it the is it the Baloney Awards? That's what I like to call them. Yeah, is that what you call the Oscars? That's what I call the Oscars. Is the Baloney yeah, Awards? It is the Baloney. It's Baloney's biggest night. It's the Baloney Awards. Uh, yeah, my Baloney has a first name. It's S L U M D O G. Yeah, my Baloney has a last name. It's M I L L I O N A I R E. Do you think I perfect? Do you think I did that right? <laughs> I think you did actually spell that right. It was touch and go for a second there. I got really you, embarrassed. You just coasted, you coasted downhill. Oh, you can hear it. You can hear the minute that you're like, I may have, may have gotten over my skis on really, this one. Really confident in the first four letters of millionaire, even the first seven. Uh, and then I was like, oh no, what if I misspell millionaire on a fucking show about Survivor? No. <laughs> anyway. Um, I spelled billionaire right, which means I am in front runner for the next million dollars on Survivor 45 next year, but this time we're still talking Survivor 44. Thomas, did you watch Survivor 44 last night? I certainly did, and boy, uh, what a season it's been so far. I literally thought you were about to say your arms were tired, <laughs> the way you said boy. Well, yeah. Just flew, in, just flew in from watching Survivor, and boy, are my arms tired. Why doesn't Jeff ever, like, strap the urn to his chest at the final vote and then run off the coast of Fiji, flapping his arms, and then fly to New York? Yeah, ridiculous that he doesn't do that. <laughs> Jeff, call me, make me a producer. Uh, this week's episode was called Two Dorky Magnets, and they weren't talking about this podcast. It was it was about the two people on the show, Franny and Matt. How about that? Yeah, I mean, I think you and I both understand being uh, the, the sort of uh, magnetic pole of two dorks, so. What do you mean by that? Be more specific when you say that. <laughs> oh. oh, just people we knew in high school. Not us. Not us. <laughs> yeah, the magnetic pull. We had a lot of like nerdy friends, but that was only because we were like smart people who had like a lot of smart glasses. Yeah, we uh, were like smart and cool. And but then so like there were like nerdy guys who were like the the N on a magnet stands for nerd actually, and then we were the S on the magnet, which stood for super cool. Yep, that's right. Yeah, and that's why we won an award in high school, the super cool guys award. That's what <laughs> yeah, we super won. Super cool guys award in parentheses, not dorks. <laughs> did we okay so we've talked about our oscars our baloney awards that we won in high school many a time um we won the best friends award of course no jokes was that separated by gender was it boys best friends and girls best friends or was it i don't remember because come to think of it like i don't know I think it was all dudes in our category, so maybe it was. Okay, but in RHS's defense, dudes rock. That's right. Are you getting a call or am I getting a call? I'm not. You must be. Just suddenly my, my phone. Oh, you know what it is? Sorry. Do you have an alarm set? I have an alarm set for 5 o'clock to feed the cat. <laughs> Whose oh, name France. is oh, yeah. Fran. Yet another way for Francis to disrupt this podcast. <laughs> she fucking she came in here earlier and I was like, oh, Fran, do you want to be part of the podcast? And then she sat under my feet for a few minutes uh, before we got on the phone together. And then she decided, oh, I don't want to be here anymore and just walked out. So Ridiculous. She you should kick her out of the house. I wish we could. I wish we could. <laughs> But no, she always comes running back. Oh, I want my food. Friends, wet food on the grocery list every week. That's what I was doing when you texted me earlier today. I was buying wet food some for wet Francis. Food. She requires so much. And it's a I specific. Should be getting, do you ever think, like, I should be getting wet food? I yeah. eat dry food while my cat eats wet food? Yeah, what is this bullshit? I bake all my food until it's burnt so it's super dry while my cat <laughs> eats wet, delicious turkey? 
So my hair remains lustrous. Yeah. It's got all the vitamins I need. Ridiculous. Meanwhile, Frances is munching on dry and wet food to get her nutrients and a, a, a delicious wetness. I don't know where I was going with that sentence. I'm really sorry. Um, what, what am I, spelling millionaire over here, forgetting what I'm doing halfway through? Uh, so Fran is somebody on Survivor this year, and she has a boyfriend um, on the show, and the cat has a boyfriend in real life. His name is Fat Boy, and he's a good cat, too. <laughs> That's anyway. good to hear. I don't know that... Uh what what we'll, we'll we'll get to the I don't think they've made it official yet but mm, we'll, okay we'll get into it. Uh, speaking of uh, animals that have uh, human traits, over on the Ratatouille tribe, MGM talks about how he played his shot in the dark, so no one knows where his allegiances lie. MGM, very smart move. I was very. That is actually for really. That. Yeah, I didn't fully understand what he was doing, but it is very smart to be mm-hmm. like, well, I'm not going to win either way if I cast a vote here. So yeah, uh, yeah, I I didn't really understand it in the moment, but once he explained it, I was like, oh, that. Totally makes sense, you know. Um, but now we like now he's not gonna have the shot in the dark later when he really needs it, you know. Yeah, when it'll definitely work. It always <laughs> works when you really need it to. Because it's such a good advantage and good uh, part of the show. Brandon asks Kane why he voted for him. Yeah, this kind of this didn't really seem to lead to anything. No, like, it's hey, also whatever. like. There's an easy answer to that, and I think what the answer... Because his answer was basically... He was just honest. He was just like, yeah, it just seemed like that's the way the numbers were going. You know, it's the first vote. But uh, I think all you need to say is like, look, man, you had an idol. You were the biggest threat. You don't have an idol anymore. I don't think you're a threat anymore. Yeah. Like, (laughs) if anything, playing his idol proved why Kane should have voted for him. Yeah. It's like, we got rid of the idol that you had, so there's no reason to... You know, for anybody to be suspicious of you at this point. Yeah. Uh, over on Soka, Brandon talks about his dog. Brandon talks. No, not Brandon. Sorry, I was probably thinking about our future mayor, Brandon Johnson. Not Brandon. What's his name? Matt talks about his dog and how his ex took the dog when they broke up. Very sad stuff. Yep. Yeah. It, it's also really funny that this, the like, I went through a breakup is the thing that gets the. Uh, the like sad inspirational <laughs> music. It's like that's the that's the best that we could get him to to talk about. <laughs> I mean, that's a lot. That's a lot. I mean, um, look, I'm not not to downplay that. I'm sure that was tough for him. But you're going up against people that have like recovered from drug addiction or beat cancer, and you're just like, yeah, my girlfriend broke up with me and took the dog. That's two and took, major oh, of things. And took the dog. Two major things happening at once. I'd hate it. Um. Jeff, you know how we always make fun of Jeff for being so sappy on the show and, like, having all these sentimental backstories for everybody? Yes, he, of course. He, he was talking about it on his podcast, which also, he's using the word only now on his podcast, which seems <sighs> sus. Jeff, you don't, you don't want to go there, buddy. Yeah, get the fuck out of here. Uh, so... He was like, you know what? People complain all the time about being too sentimental with the flashbacks, and they're right, too. Uh, but I'm sorry, I'm just a sappy guy. I was like, well, <laughs> the fact that he at least acknowledges it makes me hate it less. Yeah, that's that's OK. That's a, an OK explanation. I'll still be annoyed by it, but at yeah, least just 100 percent. But uh, like the fact that he recognizes that he's doing it. Yes. Yeah. Is, is that right? Um, and also it, it's not so much this season so far. No, and I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how much Jeff has control over the editing or whatever, but I can believe that he's sincere where he's just like, yeah, this stuff I actually do really. It's Speaking It feels of, less cynical if Jeff is pushing it for that, obviously, than just being like, this is, you know, like a way that we can get the audience invested or whatever. Speaking of the edit and Jeffrey's hand in it, um, he claims there's no such thing as the winner's edit. My, my That's exactly what someone who does the winner's edit would want you to think. <laughs> my brother in Christ, we've watched 43 seasons of this. We we know how to recognize a winner. You are lying. <laughs> like He was like, no, it's all about telling the story of each individual. It's like, 
Yeah, but one of those individual stories is winning the game. That's also, yeah, that's also, like, not true because they'll deliberately mislead you with editing stuff. Yeah, I guess that's true. Last season, we uh, we were all shocked. And he was right there, the Alley Gabler. So funny. Can we just agree? So funny still to this day. That so he was funny. So funny. Especially in that travel council, that final travel council. Um, so Matt and Franny have great chemistry. As a lover of smooching, Thomas, what did you think of all this? Oh, I, it was great. I, yeah. I like them as a, as an alliance. Um, I'm calling them the Dork Squad from now on. And uh, yeah, they and you know what, things are working out. He's uh, maybe got a new girlfriend and a new dog. That walking stick that they had. <laughs> <laughs> Ernest, yeah. Yes, um, Ernest. Yeah. The uh, thing I was going to say about what you said was something, but now I've lost. What it was going to be. Um, yeah, Matt, I really like Matt. I really like Franny. I like them a lot together. He trusts her a lot enough to tell her that he has lost his vote. I mean, I get it. I don't think this was the best move for Matt, but I get it. I get wanting to be honest with your wife, and they, they are married now. Yeah, I think it's early enough that I, I don't think this would be the opportunity that she would take to like use that info against him. If it ever comes to that, they're enjoying each other's company too much. So I don't think it was that risky for him to do that. Yeah. I just, the, the name of the game these days is survivor. Obviously they haven't changed the name, but the name of the game is don't tell anyone anything. We learned, we've learned that time and time again. We learned that from Marianne in 40, Two, we learned it from Mike White and David versus Goliath. We learned it, you know, every time there's a fucking knowledge of the power, don't tell anyone anything. Yeah, I, I think that's true most of the time, but this is one that it's like, if he gets through the next tribal council, it won't matter. Yeah, sure. Um, also, he wants to smooch, so. Yeah. Can't blame him. Uh, Tika has uh, a lot of tension on their tribe, and Helen thinks it's because of the birdcage. And then they all agree to go looking for the key. Carolyn climbs a tree and touches a snake. Cool. <laughs> I like this, this scene. I'm surprised this doesn't happen more. Well, yeah, people usually know not to climb where snakes are. You know? I guess I don't usually... I don't know. I don't think I would have been like, this is, do they tell them what trees the snakes are in or I don't know. I think they're like, Hey, there's snakes around and these snakes climb trees. Probably. I don't know. I wasn't there. You know, I can't say, but they have a bunch of like, beware of snake signs posted up in the trees. Yeah. The snakes put them there themselves. They wanted people to stop bothering them. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) They learned English and how to paint. (laughs) Okay, so the Ratatouille tribe has Kane looking for an idol, but he finds a crab instead. That was funny. It was pretty funny. I liked how obvious it was that Kane kept looking for the idol. Yeah. Like, I really liked, uh, is, is it uh, MKM is the, the other Matt? MGM. MGM, excuse me. But MGM was like, yeah, it's cool that he found the crab, but, like, that means that he wasn't looking <laughs> for, for firewood or whatever. Like, it's cool he got this, but he's obviously looking for an idol. Uh, Meanwhile, on Soka, Danny goes looking for the idol, uh, and Claire is suspicious and deems herself in front of everybody else the laziness czar. You know, if she weren't a venture capitalist, I would think this was really funny. I love appointing myself as a czar. Honestly, czar is a fun word to be like, I'm the the country's survivor czar. I've been appointed... We're government yeah. task force. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Danny finds the key, and uh, that's great stuff. Carolyn compares looking for the idol to sifting through her son's poop to find a tooth that he had This swallowed. would I did not need to hear about this. I agree. I, Why would um, you say this on national television? <laughs> like, we all heard you say this. We, we don't need to know that about your live Carolyn. Um, you also didn't need to do that. It's just a tooth. 
And then, do you think and Carolyn then, is all right? Do you think Carolyn's getting winners at it? Do you think that we're going to yeah. have to do this again? Well, actually, Tom is the winners at it doesn't exist. Oh, I forgot. Yeah. There's no That's such like, thing as the winners the Sopranos at it. when Tony Soprano's like, there is no mafia when Meadow <laughs> asks him about it. Yeah, it's not as if the first winner of all time said, I win in the first episode. Yeah, okay. Um, so, what was your question? Oh, Carolyn. Carolyn's getting the winners at it. Yeah, absolutely. Why? I understand she wants to be a good mom and, like, give her kid money for losing the tooth. Excuse me, she wants to transfer the tooth with the tooth fairy to give the money to the child. But couldn't you, like, talk to the tooth fairy and be like, he swallowed it, and I didn't want to sift through poop yeah. because I'm a normal person. All you got to do is just put money under his pillow and be like, hey, talked it over with the tooth fairy, told her yeah. you swallowed that tooth. She's pretty understanding. Wow. So that she'll get you we- next time. Thomas, I feel like we would be such good moms. I know, exactly. Like, that's such an easy way to rectify that that doesn't involve <laughs> digging through your kid's poop. Yeah. Yeah. Because she said she was just going to put it under his pillow. It it wasn't like she did it one time. She did it every time he pooped for like three days. (laughs) Imagine being that child. That's, yeah. Yeah. At some point, your son is going to grow up and be like, why did you do that? Yeah. He's going to like tell this funny story to a a future partner or something. And they're like, have you ever told anybody about this in therapy? (laughs) Yeah. Well, my mom told everyone about it on national television. <laughs> so basically the same. Uh, so I wrote here she found it. Did that mean she found the idol or she found the poop? She finds the key. Oh, she also found the, the tooth. The tooth and I the think. poop, yeah. Um, you know what? I actually have a dentist appointment tomorrow at Poop Purdy. <laughs> you like that joke? I deserve this. I've used that so many <laughs> times on others. The tooth hurdy joke is like my go-to <laughs> annoying joke, so I earned this. It's your go-to thirty. It's That's your Pokemon go-to thirty. The polls. This is a huge stretch. You should have quit while you were ahead. <laughs> Imagine if that was a real thing. If you if you were a basketball team and you were up fifty-one fifty at the half, and you were just like, "Yeah, we're good. <laughs> we're not coming back. We quit." Yeah, we did it. Uh, so Danny opens the birdcage and gets the idol and a coin with no power. How do you feel about this? The fake idol in every birdcage is the real idol in the other birdcage. I saw that and I think that's pretty cool. Very that, clever. That has some potential later in the game. But uh, mm-hmm. it is also nice for... Because I was kind of confused about how it was supposed to work with the fake idol because he just kind of pulled them both out at the same time. But it's one of those things that seems kind of obvious in retrospect where it's like, well, what you do is you just pull the real one out and you leave the fake one in there. Uh, mm-hmm. The the problem with that, though, is to, like, is there a second page of instructions that says that there's a fake idol? Because like you want to leave the instructions. Yes, in there. I think I have seen everybody have two pieces of paper when they had when they opened the cage. So you can leave like the idle instructions in there. And I, it's just, one I page. think so. Yeah. I think Cause otherwise I, I don't know how you'd pull that off. Like, Whoa, it says there's a fake idol, but there's no fake idol. Well, yeah. Then you can just go hide the key. Yep. Then you can go hide the key somewhere else. Yeah. Uh, so Carolyn is nervous, uh, about opening the cage, but eventually gets it and forgets to cover her tracks. Winners at it. She also gets some useless beats in addition to her idol uh, before she runs back to fix it. Carson notices something has changed with the birdcage. This fucking nerd. Why isn't he in the nerd magnet alliance? Yeah, come I guess on. that's more of a romance than an alliance, but. <laughs> Nerds. We should call them the nerd squad since they're magnets, you know? NS. North and South, magnets. Ah, yes, of course. And here's the other thing, Thomas. Actually, this is a genuine question. Magnets, how the fuck do they work? (laughs) That it's all magic. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) We had uh, some friends over the other day who were a bit younger than us. And uh, we said, uh, we got talking about Rick Rowling. Remember Rick Rowling? Oh, did they not know what Rick Rowling was? And I said... 
oh, what was the first meme you guys remember? And they were talking about, like, damn Daniel. I was like, oh, Daniel my God. It was, like, three years ago. What are you talking about? No, Rick Damn Rolling. Daniel was, what, like, 2014? I don't know. I don't actually care. To be honest, I always hated that one. It's a, It sucks. Like, it's a bad meme. Best meme, obviously, brain meme. Galaxy brain meme. Um, let's do a meme check-in. It's been a while since we've checked in with memes. Oh, What's your sure. favorite meme right now? Oh, man. What are the memes? Uh, 2016, I, I believe, is when Damn Daniel oh, happened. Damn Daniel? Yeah, they don't remember time. any memes before 2016? Well, they were born in, like, 2010. <laughs> How old would that make sense? Like 13? Mar- you're <laughs> yeah, we were hanging around a couple 13-year-olds. Yeah. <laughs> no, they were born in, like, the mid to late 90s. Yeah, we were selling drugs to them. <laughs> yeah. Don't tell anybody. Shh. <laughs> it's a secret. Um, what's some big memes right now? Memehunter.com. Do you think that's a real website? Yeah, probably. You should click on it. <laughs> yeah. It's loading. It's loading. This domain name, memehunter.com, is for sale. It's only $3,000. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm made out of money. I think my favorite <laughs> meme right now is probably the uh, AI voice uh, like mm. stupid videos people are making, like the like presidents talking about video games ones, or you know, like mm-hmm. all that stuff. Those yeah, are pretty my, funny. My favorite memes right now are deep fakes. I think those are fun. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so Carolyn gets an idol and some useless beads. Carson notices something has changed the birdcage, but they don't think Carolyn has anything. Why not? Right? Like, you yeah. know Carolyn was the only one not there, and now you see something different with the birdcage. It seems pretty clear to me, as a person with a brain, what happened. Yeah, that, that's kind of weird to so underestimate someone that you're like, well, there's no way she could have done it. Like, really? Yeah. Um, so they go through their bags to prove they're not the ones with the idol. Carson shows Carolyn. What did Carson show Carolyn, Thomas? Man, what didn't Carson show Carolyn? Uh, mm. <laughs> Man, I do not remember. Who is he, Shane with Sari that one time? Um, what was the implication? I don't know. I love this new bit on the podcast where I find a note that I took that I just forgot about halfway through writing. And then I have to ask you what happened. And neither oh, of us is, can it, is it Carson? Does Carson talk to Carolyn and say, like, hey, I know that you did? Or All I know. Oh, yeah, no. Carson showed Carolyn that the birdcage is off. Yeah, there's that's something off with the birdcage, and then she's like, "I didn't know how to respond. Deny it. Be like, whoa, that's crazy. Who would have thought? Who would have? Th- what could have happened? That kind of thing. I really liked. I think my favorite thing about Carolyn so far is that she kind of sounds like uh, a voice that Maria Bamford would do, describing <laughs> someone that she like went to high school with. She really does. That's such an accurate description. Which I think, which makes sense because she's from Minnesota. And I think that Maria Bamford Mm. is also from Minnesota. I think you're right. That sounds right. But I kept thinking that. I was like, this is a very Maria Bamford character. That's all I'm going to see now whenever we watch this season moving forward. I love Maria Bamford. She's one of my favorite comedians. Very, very funny comedian. Uh, She is from Port. One second. Port Hume, California. She went to school in Minnesota, the University of, and she's been married to Scott Marvel Cassidy. Uh, I'm actually a Scott DC Cassidy kind of guy myself. (laughs) 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 What a joke. (laughs) Um, She is very funny, and I highly recommend anybody who hasn't seen anything that she's done, go do it. Um... Speaking of funny projects that Lauren Michaels has been involved in. Oh, I didn't realize she was in Arrested Development. Um, Ariel and I have been watching Detroiters, and she asked me after another episode, who's Lauren Michaels? (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, he's very good at at producing funny shows. He's produced SNL, and she goes, 
why isn't SNL funny then? <laughs> it's like, you know what? Fair question. It's a great question. You should have told me the, th- the best learned fact, which is that uh, the character of Dr. Evil is based off of him, like the voice and mannerisms. Oh my God. Yeah, I totally forgot about that, but that's true. Uh, so then at the immunity challenge, both previous winners bowed when returning their immunity idol to Jeff. What did you think of this? Did you notice how, co- how cool they were? Uh, I, you know what, Jake? I did not. <sighs> You're missing out on some great stuff. Some great idols that I'm missing out on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the winning tribes get fishing gear. That was a in the moment edit because you want to know what this note actually says, Thomas. What does it say? What I wrote while re- while watching the show. You know, growing up in the 1990s, uh, I learned how to type on a keyboard without looking at it. So sometimes I'll type while watching the television program on the television. So what I wrote on the computer was winning tribes get. Fishing tribe. <laughs> so, so this isn't your fault. You're blaming uh, Ultra Key for this. Yeah, I'm. I'm blaming. Oh, what was her name? Who taught? Who taught keyboard typing in the 80s and 90s? Uh, that program that everybody had. Oh Miss, yeah, Miss Typing Master. Whatever. Yeah, you're just like. I don't know. It'd be really funny to be like, I learned typing in elementary school, and all your typing is like. All lads are sad. Mavis Beacon was her name. Oh, Mavis Beacon, of course. Do you, uh, do you remember yes. Ultra Key where, like, when you first started learning, uh, oh my God. they would only make you spell stuff on the home row of keys? So it would just be like yes. a dad, a lad, a salad. All dads are sad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm looking at, like, screenshots of different typing games, and it's, it's really bringing back core memories, as the Internet loves to say. Uh, there's this one that has like a cat that I don't remember what this game is, but I 100% uh, remember this image. Just l- look up on Google Images, your favorite website, typing game 90s, and scroll down. You'll see one that's got a little cat's head and like a 80s, or I don't know, that kind of uh, that was a microtype? aesthetic. It mm, could be. He had cake and cola near the lake, and there's a smirking cat. Yes, that's the one. Yep, that's the one. You typed 140 words a minute. Damn, that's Uh, fast. No wonder that cat's smirking. Jumpstart typing. Uh, Remember the jumpstart games? I remember the jumpstart games. Why don't they do jumpstart for adults? Yeah, exactly. I think we had jumpstart like fifth grade. Mm -hmm. We had a couple jumpstart games. Ooh, good news, Thomas. Speaking of computer games from our childhood, uh... I recently learned my parents still have. You, do you remember the uh, old iMac computer that we I had? I know exactly had, like, where you're going with this. That like bulb uh, dome. Uh, uh, what, what's it called? The engine or whatever. And then the it had an arm and a flat screen uh, that would. Swir- swivel around on the on the arm. I remember Favorite this computer. I, I remember ever this had. computer very well. It was a very stylish computer. Uh, apparently, my parents still have it in their basement. Uh, so I want to say that we can get Sims Castaways to work on that computer. Oh I wow, think it's compatible. I thought you were going to so, go with what was the game that came on the computer that you would play? Automatic. That was, automatic. That game that was called game automatic. Sucked. That game was so much fun. Okay, so people for people who weren't in my family uh, in the early 2000s, um, there was a game on this Mac computer called Automatic, and it was about a little robot whose name was Otto, first name, O-T-T-O, like t- that Tom Hanks movie, Matic, like automatic, like, you know, like a car. And he was a little robot, and he ran around the world doing adventures. Jake, I have great news for you. I've just learned something very, very uh, important. Uh, Automatic is available on the App Store for iPhones. I don't know if it's going to have the same, uh, the same kick, you know. Because here's the thing that was fun about the Automatic on my family computer. There's a level where you're at a carnival in the clouds, right? I know, great game. And there's a bumper cars game that you can play against aliens, I think. I think you were fighting aliens in the game. Anyway, if you hit the right moment or the right piece of the like four tires that like kept you like the entryway into the 
court or whatever you call it for bumper cars. If you hit between two of those tires, you glitched through and then you could drive your bumper car all around the map. I remember this happening. You wouldn't, weren't able to do otherwise. It was very fun. Uh, and it's Jake, the only I thing have, I remember from that game. I have even better news for you. Uh, according to Please the Wikipedia me. page for Automatic, in September 2021, the game received a free open source re-release for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. So you can just get it for free right now for your computer I love that. that you have. I fucking love free stuff. Um, I'm trying to get a roller coaster tycoon. What's a roller coaster coaster tycoon I can get for the modern day, Thomas? That's a good question. Um, I want to say that they did a remastered version of some of them, so let me see. I, I do too, but I couldn't I couldn't figure out which one was like the right one, you know? There's a million versions of that game. I thought Roller Coaster was, Tycoon Classic is a new RCT experience remastered in 2017 by franchise creator Chris Sawyer. That game is on Steam. That's on Steam. There's okay. Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 Complete Edition as well. See, what does that mean? I'm not 100% I know, sure. I, I know think you're that this just is something what that you should do further week, research but, into. I don't think yeah. we need to get that far into this. You're just you're doing the same research I did like three days ago. Um, I, I feel like I re- recall you talking about, well, Roller Coaster Tycoon several years ago. So probably whenever that game came out. And we were like, remember how fun that game was? And it's a good game. Said, yes. Um... So Automatic, another fun game. The Mac computer probably coming to our my home soon. Um, or perhaps I'll go up to my parents' house soon and we can play the Survivor Castaways. Sims Castaways, I should say. Make Jeff Probst, make Hurley, make uh, uh, TJ Lavin, Ryan Devlin, Karamo Brown. Others. Oh, Terrence Shea. Kenny Crawford. And more. Yeah, even more. Uh, so they have to go over a ladder and then down a net and then pick up another ladder and then lift a bridge and then do the classic snake maze. I love the snake maze every time they do it. But here's the thing. Because they do it every uh, season, uh, MGM was able to create a version of the maze in his backyard to practice on. How do you feel about uh, somebody's ability to do this now? Yeah, I think... If you if it happens one time, I think you go like, oh, cool. It's neat that people like care that much about the game. And then you go, we're not doing this again (laughs) or we have to change it. Yeah. Um, Yeah, because I remember Evie did a puzzle in like three seconds because they had practiced that puzzle. I wonder if we've seen that puzzle since. I I would I would bet not. Yeah. So maybe we won't see the snake maze again or they'll drastically change it which i'd be fine with too because it's fun it's one of those things on this show that looks really fun and also really would be really satisfying to do yourself uh so i wonder if they're gonna sorry i wonder if they're gonna make a rule against 3d printing puzzles as well how are they gonna enforce that They, they certainly can't here's an idea what if um what if you don't what if you don't just redo challenges? What if you just come up with something just like new cool based? challenges? And then also maybe you don't keep reusing locations, you know, like you go to a different ooh, place ooh, than Fiji. Ooh, ooh. Then maybe or there might be some if, fun challenges based on the location that you're in that you could do. Mm, but what if Thomas instead of that, what if we instead of that throw eight new advantages at these players and see what they do with them and then don't bring six of them back next season oh well all right then that's uh yeah i guess that's what we're gonna do yeah thank you uh ratatouille wins this challenge soka takes second place uh not not surprising at all carson then talks about 3d printing puzzles since so many of them are which should be illegal he should be in prison it should be illegal 3d printing should be illegal you know, you can 3D print guns, and there's nothing you can do about it. Back in my day, we could only print two dimensions, and we were grateful for it. Yeah, that's right. If we were Helen, lucky, we could print two dimensions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Helen, Carson, and Sarah discuss who to take out and target Carolyn. I was against this plan as a Carolyn stan. 
They then try to pull in Jam Jam, and he immediately tells Carolyn, and they target Helen. How did you feel about this as uh, the biggest Helen stand? Um, I was a little disappointed. Hmm. Yeah. What did you think of when they were like, put the letter of the uh, the initial of who you want to put out, and she made a W with her hands to say Helen instead of an H. What did you think of that? I'm going to be honest. I don't remember that happening. Maybe I did. Maybe I missed that. What are you looking at when you watch the show? Uh, Sometimes I'm like uh, maybe playing video games while I'm doing it. Maybe. That's fun. I'm usually playing the Sims when we watch old seasons. Uh, Oh, that's what I was going to say earlier. Um, We've been watching through old seasons, you know, and we just watched this season, this episode where they had to just, Make the whole tribe had to make a really big fire, and there were four ropes that were of f- uh, higher and higher heights, and they just had to get their fire high enough to burn all of the ropes, and then a flag would come down in four parts. Very simple. And then there was like a huge pile of six that both tribes got to pick from. It's such a simple, fun challenge that makes sense within the context of the show. That doesn't involve 3D printing at all, which, by the way, should be illegal. You know? Yeah. Why not, why not do stuff like that anymore? That would be nice. I would like it if they did that. Also, Jake, yeah. uh, sometimes I'm watching the show when it's, like, the morning on a weekend, and I'm, like, still curled up. Like, I just woke up, and I was like, oh, I should probably watch Survivor now. And then, but, yeah. like, I'm very comfortable. And sometimes maybe I lay back down for a second. <laughs> You know, mm. maybe I, I just listen a little bit and I miss when someone sure. makes a W with their, their hand instead of an H. Honestly, I feel like cozying up in your own bed is a W of its own on the weekend. You know, that's right, brother. Uh, speaking of W's, how about these wildlife shots? I'm excited. Are we going to be talking about Ernest? Uh, Ernest is one that we considered, but it's not the one we're focused on because we've talked about the walking stick before. Uh, and you know we want to focus on new animals as much as possible because we <laughs> Jeff uh, doesn't like to show us new animals all so often. No, we got we to, you know, strike while the iron's hot if we see a new one. Uh, so Carolyn ran into that snake, of course. We had several fish. Uh, coral reef, which I feel like I've heard is a living being. Um, so I wrote it down, you know, because we don't get new animals all too often. So maybe coral reef is a living being. I don't know. If you know anything about coral reefs, shoot us an email or Twitter. If you yeah. are a coral reef, hit us up. Mm. Let us know so that you are bu- alive. We also had a butterfly and the scalloped hammerhead shark. How much How much do you think these babies uh, are long? How long do you think they how are? How much are they long? How much are these babies long? How much are those babies long? I think those babies are probably like three feet long. And a few more. Uh, the males are about five to six feet long, just like human beings, and they weigh about 65 pounds, just like boys who are young. <laughs> That's sexist. So Girls sorry. who are young can also weigh 65 pounds. Girls who are young can also be 65 pounds, whereas female hammerhead sharks, who are of the scalloped variety, are up to eight feet long, just like women in real life. I sometimes. prefer uh, hammerhead sharks au gratin to the scalloped kind. That's a stupid joke, and you should feel ashamed. (laughs) And like little girls, they can weigh up to 80 pounds. Okay? So please don't call me sexist anymore. Shark sexist? No. Sharks are friends. She's an ally. (laughs) To To all. All seafood. Yeah, all seafood. Yeah, when I'm on a seafood diet, when I see food, I uh, am an ally of it. Uh, When I see food, I respect it. When I see food, uh, I when I see well, when I see seafood, I respect it. I respect the ocean, an ocean of tears. Uh, they have eyes and nostrils on the sides of their head. How fun is that? It's pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff, and everybody's saying it. 
They have very high metabolism for sharks and require a lot of food when they're young. They're often found in large schools because it makes catching prey easier. The shape of their head helps them pinning stingrays to the floor. And they have very large litters due to high infant mortality rates. And uh, they uh, will feed on literally anything that's nearby and available. I really related to this shark more than any other shark, to be honest. The shark that likes to snack. What's not, you know, what's not to relate to? Yeah. Uh, They are a victim of overfishing, and the price for their fins is very high. So, I ask you this. Where do you think they rank on the IUCN red list? Um, I'm going to say... Um... You want to threatened? Hint? I'm going to say threatened. Well, we have a lot of threatened things on the wildlife shot. It's pretty standard, and we—I don't think we've ever seen a hammerhead shark. If you catch my drift, get it? Because like the ocean, is it like critically it's endangered? It's critically endangered. I don't like that. Yeah. Uh, speaking of critically endangered, uh, this tribe goes to tribal council. And there is tension in this tribe. Helen says that they should concern themselves with tribe strength. Uh, What do you think of that idea, given who said it? Um, I'm going to be honest, man. I've trained myself to not pay attention to what people say in tribal anymore because it literally never matters. (laughs) Uh, Okay. Um, sure, that's fair. I completely understand. Carson says they need to consider alliances. Carolyn starts crying and says that she's scared. Jam Jam says that this is just who Carolyn is, saying that she will cry when she opens a ripe banana. Or she'll cry when she opens a green banana and finds that it's already ripe. So... How do you feel about that uh, amount of crying? I'm pro. I'm pro-crying. Krylin. I don't think there's anything wrong with crying. I think you can cry a little too much. I think that maybe you don't need to cry that much. I don't think there's anything wrong with crying, but you can cry too much. Yeah. Like, it's, I don't think anything beyond that amount of crying, I think the most I would say is it's kind of annoying. Like, that's the worst you're going to get from me from that. But it is a sure. little annoying. Okay. Uh, so, at the, uh, did you notice at the voting, do you pay attention when they go into the voting booth? Yes. Did you hear what Krylin said? What what did Krylin say? Refresh my memory. <laughs> she was annoyed with how many chess pieces there were. <laughs> and she goes, just put one. <laughs> it's like, that's such a petty grievance. It's so unnecessary. I'm leaving the show. <laughs> She's like. Yeah, it was just so funny. I totally understood where she was coming from. Uh, Cryolin gets one vote. Uh, and that was Helen her version of fuck these votes. banana trees. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, oh, yeah. Fuck these papaya trees. <laughs> Hel- uh, Carolyn, when she opens an uh, unripe banana, papaya. I keep saying banana. Uh, so Helen's out. Pretty sad stuff. I was not excited to see her go, but, you know. Who else was supposed to go? Carolyn? Not in my heart. Uh, So last week, Thomas, you had five points, remember? I had four points. Pretty tight game. Uh, Lauren survived this episode. I mean, you got a point. Kane survived as well, which means I got a point. Uh, Danny survived, so you got a point for Soka. Franny survived, so I got a point for Soka. Sham Jam survived for... Tika, so I got a point for him. But who did you? So if you remember who you picked for help for for Tika, this is so annoying because she like did not do anything to get eliminated. She just got eliminated. Who was that? Helen. Mmm. You know what? It does say here. That I you couldn't one hundred percent remember. I was like, I'm pretty sure I picked Helen, and I was just like, yeah, Why? Why did they do that? Like, what was so the no point? point? Why did they? There. She didn't do anything. It's so annoying yeah. when you pick someone and they just get very arbitrarily voted off. Yeah, I don't, I did not follow why that happened. But she, good she news, Thomas. She was playing perfectly fine. Yeah, not perfectly fine enough. <laughs> Apparently. Soka did win the reward, so you got a point for that. I said Tika would win because I forgot 
what the tribe makeup of Tika was, apparently. Uh, so I got no point for that. We both said tools to build a shelter, forgetting that they would get fishing tribes. Uh, we said Ratatouille and Soko would win, and both of them did. And you said Carson, we voted out. I said Jamie, and neither of those happened. You said Panera, I said Charmin, neither of those had shown up yet. Yes. So you've got nine points, I've got eight points. All so right. pretty tight game. So. Well, yeah, I'd better start scoring some points, otherwise you're going to close that gap automatically. Mm-hmm. Automatically. Hey, okay, so who will win this next reward challenge? Hmm, good question. Hmm. I'm going to say uh, Soka. I was, you know, I was going to say Soka as well. I feel like they're the strongest tribe. But for the sake of competition, I'll pick Ratatouille. Uh, what will be the reward? Uh, good question. That's just a fun little normal voice I'm doing now. They've done two, like, long-term ones, so I think they're probably going to do food of, of some sort. Um, so I will say cookies. I will say there will be cookies of some Ooh, sort. I love a fucking cookie. Ugh, at Jewel Osco today, that's our grocery store here in Chicago, uh, I got some peanut butter chocolate chip cookies. That sounds delicious. Yeah, I already ate two of them. Who will win immunity? Oh, wait, don't answer that yet. I didn't say reward. I think the reward will be... Hmm. I was going to say fruit, but that doesn't make any sense. It's not specific enough. Um, I'll say it's a trip to... The movies. Okay. That's bad. That's really bad. <laughs> Why did bad. you pick that? <laughs> I don't know. You were just thinking about the Oscars. I'm so ready for the Bologna Awards tonight. Um, I did think it was next week, so I'm glad you reminded me, to be honest. Uh, let's go everything or everywhere all at once. That's the one I'm rooting for. Great movie. Great time. All at once. The reward will be... Tools to build a shelter. I know it's the third episode. It's probably late for that, but, you know, it hasn't happened yet, so. They keep talking about how hard the new era is, but then everybody's able to make a shelter immediately. Where is that? Ha- how is that happening? Yeah, Jeff, they need to make it more difficult. Them. They should have uh, people hunting them the whole time. Yes, they should make this. You want to do the most dangerous game. Man is the most dangerous game, Jeff. Uh, you should really listen to Jeff Probst's podcast. It's called On Fire with Jeff Probst. Uh, I think it's a bad title. But it's this whatever. podcast about the song the I'm On Fire by Bruce Springsteen. Yeah. <laughs> Every week he covers a different version of it. Uh, and then he literally covers it by playing the acoustic <laughs> guitar over the uh, closing credits. Um, he, uh, I don't think he's very good at podcasting, but he does always offer the opportunity to write in and complain. So I'm recommending the show to you so you can remember what that email is and you can write in all of your ideas. He also said, here's another thing he said, uh, he's open to bringing the auction back. He just needs a good idea to resuscitate it. I don't know what that means. Yeah, but that's, I'm going to need you to be more specific about that one, buddy. Yeah. Uh, so who's winning immunity? Ah, uh, good question. I think that I'm just I'm riding the Soka train, you know. You gotta ride the Soka train. Oof. Uh, I'll save Ratatouille. Uh, and who will be voted out? Gonna stick to my guns here, and I'm gonna say Carson. Well, yeah. Uh, Apache Tika is a content detection and analysis framework written in Java. That's not what I'm looking for, Google. Tika from Survivor. Who's left? Carolyn? Carson? Uh, Carolyn, Carson, Sarah, and Jam Jam. I'm going to say Sarah. I have nothing against Sarah. I just, 
That seems like she's the next to go for that tribe. I have no faith in the Jika tribe anymore. No, they've, uh, they've lost those privileges. <laughs> obviously, you're waiting for Panera, that delicious bread. I'm waiting for Charmin, that delicious paper between your buttocks. Uh, Thomas, do you want to talk traitors? Yeah, yeah. Let's talk some traitors. Let's go to Trader Joe. All that bad shit you eating is gonna take a toll. They got some healthy food for you and it's full of low. We got like seen Ryan Locke to get killed. What did you think of this? Uh, it's, you know, gone too soon. Yeah, agreed. Alan is wearing no beret this week, but he does have a matching black and green plaid coat and kilt with red accents. I thought his best look yet. Yeah, he's he's out there killing it. He's serving, as the kids say. Do you watch the traders with your eyes, or do you just listen to it? Oh, I watch the trade. I watch um, the, most of the traders with my eyes. I do like watching it with my eyes. Cody fucks up, and now Kyle suspects him. But a lot of people are suspicious of Kyle. Kyle's a little too outspoken. Uh, then Alan holds a funeral where they are. $20,000 worth of gold within the congregation. He gives each of the players a riddle in the confessional. And then they have to go out and find these people. I thought this was so much fun. This was great. I loved this. This was extremely fun. I just like the, the set design and stuff for all this stuff. It's just yes. very, like, it's very well done. You know what I'm wondering? Maybe this really is Alan Cummings' real house. <laughs> This is just where he lives. Those are his neighbors that lives. were in the church. Well, because I learned this week there's like 16 versions of this globally. And clearly this is taking place constantly. They, they're they shooting it week to week or day to day. They murder two people every day. So it's really easy. It's really quick to shoot, I would guess. So you could get like three or four in a month in this house. And so maybe Alan Cumming just welcomes every couple months a new group of people into their house, into his house, and then maybe that's what's happening. We got to watch. This is a Traders show now. Yeah, this is uh, the only Traders podcast. <laughs> uh, Alan gives them each a riddle. Sari and Stephanie's team wins handily. Uh, then Kyle goes around defending himself, asks Can Andy for help in accusing Cody, but then at the banishment, Andy started the discussion and accused Kyle. Oh, this was uh, so well done. You know, I feel like we make fun of this show a lot, like we have very low expectations for it, but it it really delivers when it wants to. Yeah, this is there's just a lot of intrigue. Yeah. Like, the even with us, the viewer, I thought for sure Andy was going to be like, for sure, I've been suspicious of Cody as well. I'm glad you said something. And then at the banishment, they're like, you know what? I actually think it's you, Kyle. So good. Uh, Kyle accuses Cody, but he's able to deflect. They voted, they voted, and it comes down to Kyle and Kate, with Kyle being banished. I was happy to see it. You know? Yeah, good stuff. It was uh, the the only issue is uh, Cody has sort of overplayed his hand at this point. Yeah, but Stephanie is now on to Cody. Oh, Amanda has to leave for outside reasons. Pretty sad stuff. Yeah, they, they just kind of threw that in there at the end. I, I don't really remember who Amanda was, but sure. Yeah, bummer that she had to leave before we had a better handle on oh. who she was. Holy shit. Then there's a there's a traders meeting and there's a knock at the door. Is this knock at the door, Amanda? Uh, no. Well, that that doesn't make sense, right? I watched to the next episode and it's a much stupider reveal. They're just doing the reality wait. TV thing where they're like, someone's gonna come in and you need to act way too shocked. You gotta act so shocked. Uh, well, speaking of stupid reality TV, Thomas, I know you've missed it, uh, but it's back. Did you watch the Challenge World Championship last night? No. Okay, well, it's good. It's actually, like, probably the best season they've done in years so far. The people from the four global shows perform in a skills challenge. It's basically the NFL Combine for the challenge. 
uh, at one point they have to drink these really nasty shakes, and somebody says, they told us these shakes were vegan. Vegan what? Shit? So that's pretty funny. <laughs> that's yeah, good stuff right there. It's a pretty good line. Uh, speaking of the word shit, Grant Crap, one for the men. He's from Australia. And Zara, one for the women. She's from the UK. Uh, and then the first scene with Danny is him and Naya talking about his wife, Kiki, who is great, by the way. I don't know if you've heard, but Kiki, wonderful. Yeah, Kiki, uh, number one wife. <laughs> uh, one of the men leaves the games game for medical reasons. I don't remember his name. Danny and Tori are a team, though. Thomas, your two favorite people. Danny from Survivor, Tori from Are You the One, they're a team. That's, that's fun. I like that. Uh, ben and Casey are also a team. Ben from Survivor, Casey from Big Brother. Remember these two people? Uh, it's sort of. Ben Dreebergen from I remember, Survivor. I remember Ben Dreebergen. I don't remember Casey. Uh, Casey is dating Nani. She's really boring. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I do remember her. She was in the Big Brother Alliance. She, she was the one that hurt herself in the, in the final. Alliance. Yes, yeah, she broke her foot or something uh, when she was teamed with Fessy maybe but then she eventually was teamed with CT in a final and won I like that every so, time CT gets brought, brought up it sounds like we're saying CTE like she got CTE she's not she's not in it anymore she got too many concussions yeah speaking of uh, Will Smith and the Baloney Awards I call them the Baloney Awards because I actually don't even grant them any authority it's kind of baloney the Oscars. Yeah, the Oscars, definitely baloney. I think we can all agree. The Independent Spirit Awards are the only awards I care about. And the Oscars of Rockford High School in 2009, obviously. Uh, Joanna, or sorry, not Joanna, John A. and Grant Crapp are a team, and they won the first challenge. What was the first challenge? I don't know. I didn't write that down. But the season's good so far, so check it out. It's also on uh, Paramount Plus, rather than MTV, so it's easy to find. Which means, like uh, like MTV, though, is what I'm trying to say, like MTV, Paramount Plus also plays music for the challenge. Thomas, this is a segment called Music Minute. Music make you lose control. Music make you lose control. Let's go. I don't need to tell you, you know. Yeah, you I know about segment. the music, and I know about minutes. Uh, Count to 100. Nope, that's more than one minute. Count to 60, please, quickly. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60. There you go. Wow. That was incredible. I, I did not think you were actually going to do that. Nope. So many times I'm like, on this podcast, I'm like, Thomas, do this. And you get no. I don't want to it's do It's just that. what was in my heart. Fair. Uh, that made me very happy, but for some people, they're only happy when it rains. Do you remember that song? I do remember that song. Classic. Who's it by? It's by Garbage, isn't it? This one was by Ronit. R-O-N-I-I-T. Okay, but the original version is by Garbage, correct? That's right. Um, it was your favorite thing, a slowed down, boring version of the song by somebody else. Uh, do you know of a band called Grandson? Uh, no, I'm not familiar with that. I'm familiar, familiar with a band called Granddaddy, but not Grandson. Yeah, th- this is Granddaddy's Grandson. Okay. Uh, they had a song called Blood Slash Slash Water. Uh, it was okay. There's also another, a third song that I uh, didn't get the name of because Paramount Plus doesn't put it on screen. And I, I, I missed getting it up on Google in time. You know how Google does Shazam now? I've heard, yes, I'm aware. Uh, and then the fourth and final song they played this week on the challenge was the fourth single off of the band's ninth album. It was released July 21st, 2022. Thomas, how old would you have been July 21st, 2022? Wow, July 21st, 2022. I would have been... 30 years old. <laughs> Did you have to do some math there? There's my head was just empty for a second there. It wasn't even like I was doing anything. It was just, there was a void. And then I was like, ah, 30. 
I I uh, I did I all that counting missed. earlier. I think you know. Yeah. It, my brain just oh, had to Thomas reset. Says, Thomas, you've proved you can count to thirty twice. Uh, I was, uh, of course, thirty-one years old, July twenty-first, twenty twenty-two. This song has not charted in the U.S., but it did make it into the '80s on a few U.K. charts. There's a hint for you. Okay, so it made it uh, into the '80s on a few U.K. charts. Came out mm-hmm. in July of 2022. Uh, the lead singer called it the best metal slash prog track we've ever done, and it features industrial tinged granite heavy guitar riffs that have been that has been compared in style to bands like Limp Bizkit, Slipknot, and Korn. Any guesses yet? 80 for you, Katie's. That's pretty good. Uh, boy. Whom, whom would this be? Lyrically, the song takes influence from his favor- the lead singer's favorite Paul McCartney song, Live and Let Die. And that's a little hint at the song title. It's got a similar, uh, you know, rhythm to it. I don't know. Uh, I might feel stupid at this, but I don't know that I've heard this song. Is it like Muse? Did Muse do this? <laughs> Thomas. It is a Muse song. <laughs> of course it is. I'm gonna, then of course I don't know what it would be called. <laughs> um, it's about, like, live and let die. Uh, a dark take on how life's adversity can sometimes bring out the worst human instincts to survival at any cost. Um, you know, uh, it was nominated for Best Metal Performance at the Grammys this year, going up against... Ghost, call me Little Sunshine. Megadeth, we'll be right, or we'll be back, we'll be right back after these messages. We're Megadeth. Ozzy Osbourne's Degradation Rules, Degradation Rules. Uh, Turnstile Blackout. Do you know Turnstile? I do know Turnstile. I like Turnstile. They had a song called Blackout that was nominated for Best Metal Performance at the Grammys this year. Did it lose? Uh, It did lose to Degradation Rules by Ozzy Osbourne. That sucks. Yeah. The song is Kill or Be Killed by Muse. Um, I've never heard that song in my life. It's not It's not very good. I listened to two-thirds of it yesterday while doing these notes. Um, and that was enough. It to, you got your fill on that one? Yeah, they, they compared it to uh, Knights of Cydonia. Uh, so I re-listened to Knights of Cydonia. I was like, fucking yeah. That's a much better fucking. song. <laughs> You know how they say dudes rock? Fucking knights rock. That's right. Uh, Kill or Be Killed is not as good as that song. No, probably not. Okay, well, here's the thing. We're, as long as we're talking MTV, we got to talk 808s and updates. Will and Akel went at it because Will was upset that Akel kissed Courtney on the cheek. But here's the thing. Will kissed Danielle on their date. So then Danielle confronted Will to be like, it's kind of a double standard and it's extremely fucked up of you. And he of course took no responsibility for his actions. Uh, remember how earlier I was like, there's this incel dude who kind of sucks. It's that guy. Um, it's that guy. Jordan and Eduardo and two other people went on a date. Clay and Taylor are their names. Clay and Taylor go into the truth booth and they're a perfect match. How many beams do you think they got? Remember, they got only two or three the first seven weeks. Week eight, they got six. This is week nine now. I think it would be really funny if they got, like, three beams again. I was really hoping for it, to be honest. I bet they got five. They got six. Wow, okay. Holding steady. Yeah. Holding steady. The hold steady. Speaking of music minute. They were all, they're all sequestered in Memphis. Mmm. Um... Are you feeling up for a purpose pros? Uh, I unfortunately I do have an Oscar party, a baloney party to attend. <gasps> oh, so I think that may need to wait. Um, you know what I call? Um, yeah, well, <laughs> probes for us may have died if it's season forty-four. <laughs> it's been several weeks since we've done that, but that's all right. Um, you know what I uh, serve at my Oscar party? What do you serve? Sharpoopery. That's a little joke on charcuterie. 
and how I feel about the Oscars as a... Remember when they tried to give the best picture to La La Land? That was pretty funny. That was the last Oscars I watched live, I think. Um, if you wanted to see Thomas's takes on movies and film and cinema and the Oscars and bologna sandwiches, where would they do that, Thomas? Do you have a LinkedIn or a They can follow me box? on Twitter at Tom, not Tom. Mm. Elon's website. The show, uh, DYWSLN, is the initials for this show, and the Twitter handle is DYWSLN. We're also on Instagram at The Only Survivor Podcast. You don't have to. We, we, never, we never do anything with Instagram. We're not Zoomers. Uh, we don't have a TikTok. TikTok. I don't even know what that even, is. We don't even do TikTok anymore. Uh, we have a few shows on Patreon. That's what we're doing these days. What shows do you want to shout out at? Patreon, Thomas. I think it would be fun if we had a new show called uh, Be Real with me, where we either talk about the the social media app Be Real or uh, the band Cypress Hill, because the guy, the main like rapper from them is named Be Real. Anyway, that's just a proposed show. We have real shows. Okay. One of them is called, uh, man, what would be a good one? Well, <laughs> Did you watch football this <laughs> week? Be a good one. Did you watch football this week? Is that what it is? Ooh, this is a this is a good one to shout out this week when we're not in the football season, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, people are all excited because of free agency in the draft, so you know. Oh sure, sure, yeah. It's a good week for that. Um, I I'm sorry, I have to veto your show only because it sounds like we played this game last night. One of those Jackbox games, Role Models, I think it's called where you have to elect somebody, like, within a single category, like lunch food or, uh, you know, breakfast food or uh, like dinner food, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and one of them was Sex in the City people or Mad Max people, and you had to assign somebody each character. And then it was two characters from Sex in the City, and one character... For Mad Max, but it was only three of us playing, so that that's what "Be Real" sounds like to me. Okay, it didn't work. You know? <laughs> it didn't work for you. You don't want to buy. That. I don't know. You're not buying that pitch. Okay, I'll go back to the drawing board on this one. Yeah, uh, we have plenty of shows on Patreon though that you can subscribe to. Uh, we mentioned the InSync one last year. <laughs> we um, mentioned it last year. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, we should probably mention there again. <laughs> yeah, nobody subscribed yet for some reason. It's cheap. Uh, we have a uh, wrestling one. Oh, that, that's actually a good one to shout out this week. Uh, it's called D Y W L W W. And I believe it's only a hundred dollars a month, which is cheap as <laughs> so one we're going to do. So little money. It's so little money so for you to affordable. spend on, on a content. And it is WrestleMania weekend. I mean, uh, we're on the road to WrestleMania. Um, so, you know, check it out. Uh, did you watch wrestling this week is what it's called? And yes, it's $100 a month. Um, okay, so that's that. Uh, uh, do you want to thank the fans? I would love to thank the listeners. Okay. Thank you, listeners. Thank you. And uh, we have reviews on Apple. We have reviews on Spotify. You can uh, do that there. Five stars for those. Did you give the boilerplate review already? This is my favorite podcast. I like it better than all the other podcasts. I give it a big thumbs up. Spotify will not allow me to leave reviews. But uh, if I could, I would say I look forward to seeing this on Spotify wrap. That's all you got to write. Until next week, have a great summer. Deuces. Did you know that our moms are in a book club together? I did know that. My mom yes, told me. my mom told me as well. I was like, who's in this book club of yours? And she listed all the people, and then she's like, and Thomas as well. I was like, I know her. <laughs> <laughs> I know <laughs> who that her. is. <laughs> I had the same reaction. She was like, oh, uh, Barry Scheidel's in that group. And I was just like, hey, I, I know who Apparently they had to cancel last week. For whatever reason, uh, and your mom had forgotten about it and came to my mom's house with a plate of cookies. 
And I was like, that's really that sweet. Like, that sounds like my mom. <laughs> that sounds so That nice. sounds like something that my mom would do. Uh, my mom, loving the book club. Moms love book clubs, did you know? Moms do be loving book clubs. They, love they should it. read um, that Fifty Shades of Grey, like that movie. Um, where the old ladies all read Fifty Shades of Grey. What, what movie is that? <laughs> yeah, 50, 50 for Shades of Grey. 80, 80 for 50. <laughs> 80 for Grady. I don't. 80 for Grady? Yeah. Who's Grady? Grady is uh, a portmanteau of Gray and Brady. Oh, so it's just Tom Brady. Yes. The world's greatest new stand-up comedian. Can't wait to watch his comedy. They really, I think events. those movies, those movies would have been more successful if they had cast Tom Brady as uh, whatever. What's the what's the gray guy's first name in that? Gray's his last name. Mm. Oh, gray, like because his name is gray. I thought you meant because he had gray hair. His name hair. is gray. Yeah, that's the, like, he's okay. the titular gray in the Fifty Shades of Gray. Um, Christian maybe. Yeah, that probably is what his name is. Um, I, you may be on surprise. I've never read any of those books or watched any of those movies. I just opened up an incognito tab. Yeah, uh, we want to get into it. Let's get into it. All the there's a four hundred thousand shows that we now cover. I just want to point out, you you wanted to watch the trailer. I did. I, I, as soon as I got that, I was like, "Well, I, I do. I do want some blame in this." But the I thing is, I, I didn't. Not. The thing I was, I didn't plan on was like, I thought maybe I'd like it, but I thought it was going to be just like, "Oh, we'll just watch an episode of it to see what we think on a week that yeah. we have time for it." And then it was like, well, "I kind of keep watching this though." I kind of want to keep watching it. It's really fun. <laughs> Smarten up, probes. <laughs>